What's good, man? What up, bro? So, I got this uh, song that I've had in my head, right. and I'm, I'm just going to read it back to you because I think it's so relevant to like what was, was going on now. Bless. All right, you ready? Yeah. So, I typed a text to a girl I used to see saying that I chose a cutie pie with whom I want to be, and I apologize if this message gets you down. Then I CC to every girl that I CC around town and hate to see y'all frown, but I'd rather see her smiling. Wetness all around me, true, but I'm no island. Peninsula, maybe. It makes no sense. I know crazy. Give up all this pussy cat up in my lap. No looking back. Spaceships don't come equipped with the rearview mirrors. As dim as they quick they can, right? All right, so I'm stop there. Now, if you're just tuning in, I know this doesn't make much sense, but if, if you know what anthem this is, this is the International Players Anthem. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, one of the best songs to grace hip hop yeah. ever, right? It's about marriage. It's about, you know, like settling down that commitment. Tying down that line. Like, you know, when you find the right one, you be like, is we getting married or not? Or not. Or not. Or not. For real. So, this is your girl Salon. And Muhammad Hassan. And we are Young and Muslim Podcast, baby. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Today we are talking about, uh, the, the big subject that we don't know much about. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, is we getting married or not? Oh, no, nah, that's the real question. Um, I, I know I am one day. For sure. You, you, yeah. you going to be a bachelor forever or what? Nah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to jump the broom. Except we don't, we really don't jump the broom. When yeah, I saw we, that, that was kind of weird. I was like, yeah, we should <laughs> clean with a broom, but nah, I get it. That's what, what does that mean? Like, you jump the broom, that means you go from like, you go you from one life to another life, like what? Like you're from a single life, you guys married. Like what? What's the whole? I, I jump, guess so. I, I, I look, bro. It, it's it's like an old like African American. It started like during slavery, sort of. Oh, but it's, sort of it's thing, African American right? tradition. Just jump in the broom. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. You might have looked it up. Maybe white people came up. No, you know what? No, black people came up with it. <laughs> I'm gonna claim that one. Um, I. I this is a hard one it to talk is, about. It is, man, because <laughs> you is... and I came from two different cultures, right? We yeah. are from two different cultures, so the perspective on marriage is totally different. I believe in my culture, they they blow weddings way out of proportion. You no, feel me? They do the same thing in my culture. <laughs> no, no, it's like in Egypt, Egyptians, nothing else matters except for marriage. Bro, you feel not me? many times I've been, I've been getting asked if I was going to get married since I was like, 10. No way. I so swear. it's say, okay. My, my people have been trying to marry me off since I was young, bro. They're like, hey, look at this girl, y'all. Hey, 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 hey. And I'm like, yo, pops, chill. It's funny because every time I go, like, when I was younger, I would go to, like, weddings or just, just or weddings or just events with families. I would mm -hmm. look nice. My mom's like, look, make sure you keep your eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> Love, man. That's some beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Your uncle came from town. He got some beautiful daughters around the way. And Hey. Yeah, y'all be doing that like, like, cousins and and stuff. That's African. That's like East African thing. I'm not even gonna say that's African. That's that's definitely an East, East African, African thing. African, yeah. Yeah. Like, yo, this is your cousin. I know y'all used to play together. <laughs> and you like, she is bad. <laughs> now y'all not playing in a sandbox no more. You feel me? It's just... <laughs> you can play in her oh, sandbox. You feel me? <laughs> but it's for me the hardest thing is just approaching it you know because i feel like there's the traditional way and then there's this kind of modern look bro day. look you know look me? all culture of egyptians and african americans aside the culture that we are accustomed to is the american culture and the american culture is very hard to maneuver in when you're trying to be on your day it is, now yeah, it is. now <laughs> look i'll be up front and forthcoming i have had girlfriends I've not always been straight up on the dean, so stop so law. hey, stop, <laughs> stop with your haram police crap, all right? <laughs> look, and and look, I'm upfront about it because I know that not all of our listeners are are the perfect Muslim, right? Oh. And that's not what we're here to do. We're not, not here to judge, either. right? Mm -hmm. We're here to encourage people to get closer to Allah and get back on the dean. So, sure. with that being said, though, like I'm being, I'm just telling my truth, right? Um, it was always with the intent of. Mm, not always, 
majority of times it was with the intent of like, hey, we're gonna get married. Mm. And but that's the culture here. Like you get a girlfriend and y'all moving together, you live together. Hell, you might even have a kid or two before you get married. Now that's not my that's not my mo, but like yeah. that's a lot of what we see in this culture, and nobody really has a problem with it. And I think that in the last, I would say, fifty years, you just see like the institution of marriage and what real relationships are. It, it kind of it's changed and morphed away from what our moral standards used to be. This moral Agreed. fiber that we used to have is I, starting to like pull apart. I would agree, hundred percent. I didn't have girlfriends like like bro, but I had drinks. You feel me? I didn't. Yeah. The main reason why I didn't have girlfriends because I didn't trust. Yeah, well, and, and you were trying to have it both ways. You were like, yeah, let me, look, if I don't call her my girlfriend, <laughs> she's not, I, I, I'm, I'm good, it's still allowed. <laughs> if she's just a joint, she's just a joint. Because like, just grow, growing up, I tell you, bro, all the time, growing up, it was just always the homies, just my cousins, everything yeah, like that. So yeah. my cousin, like, yo, Mo, look, no girl is getting between us, ever. I'm like, I guess he right, and I can't, no girlfriend. Point blank. <laughs> okay, I mean, Mo, I think. Trying to get to know me. Nah, cuz. For real, for Don't Always see you that. Always see you that. And then I'm, I'm, I'm a bro kind of. Bro, really to open up my eyes. Because you mentioned when you would meet people, or just meet girls, is with the intent to get to know them better. Mm -hmm. Get to know the real them. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I feel like that, that right there, like, the sight has been lost on that. You know, a lot of people want to be with each other because status. Because of power, and well, I think lust, lust, lust is a big one too. Lust is a big thing, and it's it's funny because people are together when they're truly not happy. You know, I'm like, how yeah. can I be with somebody if I'm not happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in front of the camera, we take pictures, we're awesome, kissy face, ducky face, we're traveling, but then off the camera, we're always arguing. We're not even you know sitting beside each other. We always have problems. Like, dog, it's not, it's it's, it's not, it's not even worth it, bro. But I think that's part of relationships in general, though, because even, like, I know with your parents, my parents, just parents in general, like, there's going to be fights. I think mm -hmm. what isn't what isn't holding people together is that there's no moral fiber, as in people get married out of just, like, I love you. But that shit fades. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, 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 that infatuation stage fades, right? And you need to have something that you're like, listen, like we're both going to hold each other accountable to what people say their vows, but people break their vows. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's like, I'm going to love you to the day that we die. But you one day wake up and you realize like, yo, like I don't love you as much as I did. And then you start having problems. So now what do you hold yourself accountable to? Right. You wake up like, I hope she died first. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Take her, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you horrible, bro. You horrible. <laughs> but yeah, so so there's that like people aren't holding each other accountable to anything. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's where you know our religion, like mandates marriage because we're holding each other accountable to the moral fiber of a lot that a lot of once I was placed on us. Yeah. And I'm starting to understand that more that I you know that I'm mature and get older. And but that's not to say marriage isn't about love. Like you're supposed to love the person you're with. There there's Islam has a very um, strong spirituality between husband and wife. It's not just a contractual agreement. It's something where you want to be with the person that you love. And so when you, when you mix that with the culture that we've come up with, this American culture, it's very, it's very hard because American culture is very based on lust. And it's very easy to get lost in it. I've been lost in the sauce, you feel me? So it's lust like, sells. Less cells, you feel me? Well, I mean, dude, and this it's our natural instinct. Yeah. Like, look, let's not get it twisted. Like, I look at my cat. My cat's been humping stuff since he was like, <laughs> you know, four or five months, right? And then I was like, dang, like, I hump stuff. Like, <laughs> I was like, am I like my cat? And and you start to realize, like, yo, you, we're oh, we snap. like, there's just we're naturally inclined to do certain things, and lust is one of those things, but. As we know, it's with Ramadan, mm -hmm. you hold back the, that urge. Yeah. It says in Quran, like, we have these natural urges, but we're supposed to hold back. All right? So I think that's what's really tough about, like, leading up to marriage is that, if, especially if you grow up in this country or in a country where romance is romanticized, it's not really something that is, I'm not going to say it's not important, 
but you basically like people use it and dangle it and play with it. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't take it. It it's serious, but it's it's flimsy almost. Like it's like oh, if this one didn't work out, then I go fall in love somewhere I'll find, else. I'll, that's what it is. I find out. I mean, nobody wants to fix anything anymore. You feel me? Yeah. Once it's broken, that's it. But let's think back, to bro. Let's think about how it was when we were a kid. What we thought about marriage and yeah. what we kind of think of now. Cause I think it's totally. I think it's totally different. Yeah. You feel me? So when I was younger, been in America like my whole life. Came was born in Egypt, but came here when I was three years old. Growing up, had fun and everything like that. And then once I started getting a little bit older, it was crazy because people understand arranged marriages are real. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, my I would see my parents be like, okay, hmm. so we got two kids over here on the left, two kids here on the right. We gonna have Abdullah marry Asmat and Yusuf marry Jenna, okay? And then, you know, they'll be growing up, each other, like, oh, man, I love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna marry you, know, so I already had, when I was younger, one of my cousins, like, we already, she was already tagged to me, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> like, she was already tagged to me, you feel me? So growing up, like, like, when I came to America, did that all change? Even when I came to America, she was calling me, like, hey, you know, hope just check up on her, like that, so I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> I already have, I already, it's chosen, you feel me? Kind of like, oh, my soulmate is, is, is waiting for me. And then... <laughs> Yo, I didn't know our soulmates lived next door and they were born on the same page. Usually they say, you know, you always live. Bro, like, it's, it's yo, always yo, right under your nose. Bro, you go, <laughs> you're going to the family reunion, you, you're like, yeah, that's my wife and my cousin. <laughs> the family tree just turned to a bush because it can't grow out. But that has nothing to do with Islam. So that's when culture really blurs things. Yeah. Because what is it Islamic about that? It's nothing... There's nothing. You well, me? you know what? I think because there is a part in the Quran where it talks about who you can and can't marry. Yes. And it's yes, like yes, you yes, can't yes. marry, like basically you can't marry sisters. Your mother. Your mother. Your sister. Your, your mo- mother's kids. Your sister's kids. Yeah. You feel me? And, and I'm pretty sure they need to throw like first cousins up in there. Because that's, cause like, that's, pretty, that's pretty close. So, but... um. Yeah, dude, that's that's just something like I laugh because there's just something here that you don't do. You know what I'm saying? I think culturally that's something that we don't do. Um, well, let me pull the sword because I think I might have that. We were talking about marriage. Yeah, let me yeah, man. It's, 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 uh, I wrote that down because when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I need to share this with the, <laughs> you need to share with with the squad. Him, with the tribe. Yes. Let them know. So it's also Surah 24, El Nord. Mm-hmm. And. Let me pull it up. You sure it's number 24? Uh, yes. And it was, I think it was number 30. Was it 32? Because I, I don't think I got <clears throat> that far. Here's what it says. Arrange marriages. Arrange, not arrange marriage. Arrange marriages for those who are single. And for the males and females who serve you and are deserving and fit to lead a married life. Mm-hmm. If they are poor, Allah will grant the means out of his bounty. Bountiful is Allah all-knowing. And those who find no means of marriage should exercise restraint and keep themselves chaste, chaste until Allah grants the means to marry out of His grace and bounty. All right, hold on. What part is that? That is Surah 32 and 33. No, is it Ayah 32 and 33? Yeah, Ayah, I'm sorry, sorry. Surah 24 and Nur, Ayah 32 and 33. So, I mean, what Ayah? Hold on, 19, mm. section 5. Because I so think we can, we can definitely lead into that. Because just what I'm talking about when I was younger, how they used to do that. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh yeah, you married this person, but luckily, you know, my cousin ended up getting married from somebody else. But she got married at a pretty young age, you know? And I was like, yo, bro, I'm still in high school, you feel me? I'm still trying to figure things out. She got married, like, my junior year, so she's probably, like, 17, 18, you feel me? Junior, senior year of high school. And I was like, she was like, oh, Mo, whatever, Muhammad, I got, I got married to somebody else, you know? <laughs> Thank God. I was like, God's man. <laughs> <laughs> so, then after that, my mom was like, oh, man, I guess... We kind of need to find somebody else for you. At first, they're really like gung ho about it. And my mom, once, when she sent me to Egypt just for that. She's like, look, you have to not come back without no wife. Let me repeat that. Do not come back off that plane without a wife. So I'm out there and I'm kind of meeting people and this I'm is, going look, to people's it, homes. Look, what? Some people know, like, me and you are very close. You're like my blood brother. This is the first time I'm hearing this story. Yeah, so, 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 stuff. Um, so. <laughs> I get to Egypt. So you won't let me publicly know. That's straight. <laughs> so I get to Egypt and my cousin Hamdi, right? 
He's like, all right, Mo, you already know what you already know what time it is, bro. We better go on the marriage search. So put on my on my best clothes. I was probably like 16, 17 at the time, you feel me? First I'm going. Brush clothes, they're better meet an American for the first time. It's oh, like different girls, you feel me? So I was the man. Like legit the bachelor. They're like, are you presented? So I'm legitly walking around, but at the same time I'm walking around, I'm not going there to see the girls, obviously. I'm meeting my uncles, my aunts, people of the community, my neighbors, you feel me? And luckily if I find one then I go ahead and start the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going around talking and then, you know, just looking around and then my cousin's like, <laughs> I know about her, I know about her. So it was cool because I, I, I met everybody in the neighborhood and got to know everybody and then kind of saw like who is who. Yeah. But then I, I, I just legitly saw, I just thought it was so weird because I was like, if I just, just pick one, right? Like, okay, I want her. And then like, what happens next? Do I sit down in a room with her and then just talk and then you're sitting there? It's really awkward. You feel me? There was no, they didn't provide a sanctuary for us to actually make the conversations free flowing, make it happen. It would have been different if we were like, hey, these are all the girls from the community. We brought all the young boys from the community and we're all about to go on a boat ride on the Nile. Well, we're actually getting ready to do something like that, that and that's in a what, couple weeks. That's yeah. what I'm leading up to it because I'm talking about what it used to be and I feel like how it, sh how it should be. Yeah. Right? They didn't provide a sanctuary. Like, okay, if they're like, hey, look, these are all the young girls from the community, these are all the young boys. We go on like a trip. We go see the pyramids, mm -hmm. we go to the Niles, we all start talking to each other, yeah. start talking about the dean, start talking about the history and the familiar. You get to know people and then that would be so much easier not to choose one, but to pick one that want to have a, a further conversation with you, feel me? Mm -hmm. You pick out the quality leads that you want and then from there, I can make it happen. Yeah. But they didn't provide that for me. Yeah. So when I got it, back it's, home. It's very forceful. And when I got back home, my uncle was like, yo, so what do you think? Which one, you know, did you like the one behind door number one, door number two, door number three? Oh I was like, bro, none. And then I ended up leaving and then I didn't go back to Egypt for like a few years and then came to America and then girls, the American girls, American culture are really outgoing. In mm -hmm. different ways, mm -hmm. good and bad. You feel me? The good ways they're like, hey, they'll really get to know you and everything like that. The bad ways kind of like, there be a lot more outgoing without even kind of respecting your boundaries at times. You feel me? So, yeah, yeah, I know. I get what you mean. You know, kind of there's certain situations where girls are like, hey, look, okay, but I don't, man, you really don't know me. You feel me? Like you, you, you don't know anything about me, so kind yeah. of just kind of go all out. Just kind of like, just take it slow. You feel me? Yeah. Just take it slow. So I think it was just. From one side to another side, kind of extremes yeah. on both ends. So I want to kind of find like a happy medium. So that was leading up from how back it was. And then now, I want to be in a place where I can meet young, single, Muslim women. Obviously with the chaperone there to make sure everything's okay. Listen, you feel me? Here's, here's what I believe. Okay. Get it. That we're there. At this point? Yeah, we're, we're at the point yeah. where it's, once you hit a certain level of maturity, you have to, you're resp you can't be like, I need a chaperone to make sure I don't do. Like, bro, mm -hmm. that's the whole point of Ramadan. Yeah. It's to learn how to have self-control. Mm -hmm. And so you see, you see, um, you see dudes that are like, oh, sister, you need to wear this or that or that or this. It's, it's making me feel, ur it's, it's yeah. testing my urge. It's like, yo, that's bro, the, control, your, control yourself. It's you, control yourself. Yeah. Like, like, that's the dude. You know, and, and I'm starting to understand that more. Like I'm starting to listen to more women, listen to more Muslim women podcasts, and and that's a lot of what they're saying. They're like, yo, like if you can, if you me showing my hair is getting you off, something's wrong yeah. with you, right? Like yeah. if if you can't control yourself that bad that you're going to get mad at me for dressing how I dress, then something's wrong with you. And and I believe that a hundred and twenty percent now. Like I'd be damned if somebody talked to my sister like that. Yeah. Like yo, you need to put on a hijab because you're. You're urging me. I'm like, dog, you better back up. That's sick. You know, like, it's sick. That's you're right. Sick, That's sick. So, so I, I look at it like that. That's the first part, right? Second part is, you know, I do believe, like, it should be a controlled environment. Yeah. Like. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, not, not so much a chaperone. Yeah, not like something behind the back, like, hey, that was a nice line. Smoke. <laughs> smoke, <laughs> smoke, 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 smoke. <laughs> no, uh, controlled environment. That's what yeah, I meant. Yeah, yeah. Cause like a lot of people are like, oh, you need a wali, a wali, and I've even seen girls say that. But I'm like, yo, a wali, a little no wali. It's a chaperone. Okay. It's a chaperone. Somebody that's there to kind of just facilitate. But I think I think that when you take it that literal, I I don't think it works out. Like obviously, like again, I'm American. My mm -hmm. culture, um, we go on dates, right? Mm -hmm. You go out with people, and it's you're alone to get to know the person. 
it doesn't mean that you have to be alone in their room. Mm -hmm. You can be alone and go out to eat or watch a movie or what have you. And and I think that, you know, there's a boundary that you and that person have to set, right? I think that you have to you have to have the level of maturity to be able to get there. And so like this event we're doing, like we're not going to like take girls to sneak in the back room and be like, yeah. oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're mature enough to be like, hey, listen, like even whether there's other adults here or not, you know, we're we're all to that point where we know what our goals are and what our intentions are, and we're not here to trespass beyond that point. You feel me? I'm so. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. Can you go back to that sewer that you're on? Yeah. What, what I was it? I had 32. 32. Yep. 32, 33. Tell believes are restrained and looks in the presence of women not closely related to them, so lawful for marriage and guard their chastity. That's pure and best for them. Surely the law is well aware of what they do. Um, oh, that was another part. Uh, want tell believe wants to restrain their look. Mm, I just read that. Uh, the sons and brothers and sons of... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arranged marriages for... Oh, so you're at 32, okay. Yeah, 32. For those who are single and for the males and females who serve you are deserving and fit to leave marriage, if they're poor, Allah will grant them. So this part is talking about how Allah will grant you the means out of his bounty. And and that's one thing like I've been struggling with because I've been talking to my mom and dad about it. And they're like, listen, you know, when we got married, we didn't have a lot of money. And I'm like, yo, I... I think the mentality here in America is I need to cake up wow. and then I, I'm going to get married because then we're going to be set when in actuality it's you more likely going to get married when you're at your lowest and the marriage helps you skyrocket. And that's what my parents would tell me. And I still, that's hard for me to still kind of grasp because I, I don't want no, no broke joint. Yeah. So she don't want no broke man. Yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, I feel like the, um, the pressures of American lifestyle kind of it harms marriage in a way. You feel me? Cause like the last girlfriend that I had, like I was dead set. Like yo, I'm gonna marry you. Like that's it. You know what I mean? But I think those pressures of American life and the lifestyle kind of made certain things not work in that way. I'm not complaining. A lot of the best of the planners and the knower of all things. So, but think about it. With that being said, mm -hmm. what else is left? Cause that was the only thing that was holding me back too. I was talking to my brother Omar, right, uh, down in Australia. Like, well, let's let him get married. We need to go to Australia. We do. We will. Trust me. That's another hit list, another place on my hit list. But he's like, LA man. To be honest, yeah, you know, been thinking about it, but just, just my pockets ain't looking right. You feel me? <laughs> and then he's like, no, bro, no, 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 no. He's like, you just, it doesn't matter. You feel me? <laughs> I like, can do it. No, Shabala. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Now. And then he's like, he's like, bro, look. Get married. It does, you don't have to. You don't need any money to get married. That's the thing. That is Marriage true. is free. That is true, isn't it? All you have to pay is a dowry and stuff like that. But that's a different. But like to get like married, it's it's free. So we mm. put a lot. We put a lot of emphasis on that. So now, I think that we talked about the approach. Because now I'm lucky. Now we know that broke boys can get married. Hey, hey, but but but, but but but. The father, I don't know, man. If the father know you ain't got no bread, and you ain't got no Maybe degree. Not. Well, because you ain't got no. And what hurts is that I, it, in the Quran, there's another part where it talks about how you need to be financially um, stable. And so it, it's kind of like, I guess it's saying like you need to be able to get bread, but you don't need to be bald. Exactly. I think that that's what it is. You feel me? Yeah. I like having and, a, and the law will help. You know, I think Allah will help you. I think it's kind of cool though, because it's like, yo, if you get married, the law is going to be like, I got y'all. Yeah, because cause you did it. Because I feel like marriage kind of, if you're already on your dean, that's what, it, that's what it said, marriage is half your dean, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I tell you this all the time, I was like, oh, Mo, you gotta get married, that's half your dean, but I'm like, okay, but what about the other half? Yeah. But now, alhamdulillah, I feel like the other half is coming to a close, like, I'm kind of tying that up really well, so now that I got that under control, the other 50%, I'm looking to lock down, and once I'm able to do that, then, like I said, lost Panta, like, we got these two people that are ready, let me just... So let me ask you this, how do you, how do you feel about dating? Because dating is something that you know, most will say, nah, la, 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 better, 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 hold on. But, yeah. I think that the, I think that the term dating is misused. It's a term. That's, yeah, that's I think it's a term that's misused. It's, it's, Cause, there was a brother, that brother said there was a brother, uh, brother Ali Newman Khan, I absolutely love him. He's a, he's Pakistani, but he's American, Pakistani. And, he's like, look, we date, in Islam, we date, but it's not called dating. Like, I can go out with you 20 times, before I get married, you know? but it has to be a controlled environment. People have to know where we're at. 
Yeah, we can't be sneaking off and see people have to know. Yeah, like people that. have yeah, to know. Yeah. Like, hey, we're gonna like you know, parents, brothers, sisters. We're getting coffee from this time to this time at this place because Muslim or not, bro, there's creepy people out there, bro. You know what I mean? There's some shady cats out there, so mm-hmm. you don't want nobody hanging out with your daughter that you don't know where they're at. Yeah, that's where things get kind of messed up. That's the problem because people go out and they date somebody but don't tell nobody what's going yeah. on, and then. They've been dating that guy for five or six months. So here's the problem. They date for five or six months. And then they finally have, you know, the balls tell their dad, like, hey, dad, look, I got this guy. I got this woman. You know what I mean? Can we meet them? And you meet him, like, yeah, this guy's not cool. You can't marry him. Then what are you going to do at that point? You've been with him together for a year. They're like, no, I don't care. I'm still going to be with him. And then they, they stop talking to their parents. Then they still make it happen anyway. Yeah. You kind of yeah. see what I'm saying? That's. I think, I think that's, I think that's. It's still tough because yeah. marriage is between man and woman, not sure. a man, a woman, and their mama and daddies. But you are, you are marrying their family too, bro. You're marrying their families, but at the same time, if you're marrying somebody yeah. and you love her, yeah. but your mom don't like her, mm-hmm. and your sisters don't like her, mm-hmm. and certain people don't like her, mm-hmm. that's all on you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you don't say, oh, well, you know, my mom doesn't like you, so I, I can't like you anymore. You know what I mean? And, and that's and, and I get it now if she was just a bad person that's something different mm-hmm. and you were just blinded by love lust then, at the time. yeah by lust then yeah then that's different but when you and I think that's the benefit of doing it um the halal way it's like yo you're not you know how they say sex complicates things it does because mm-hmm. because it's it's like a hot tar that catches you that's from Django. Hot <laughs> time that catches your ass. Uh, you know, it's 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 really like, yo, that's one thing that, that like binds you, right? It's a binding um like physical attraction. Yeah, well no no no, like sex. Like sex is a is yeah. a it's a binding act, right? And so whenever you're doing that and you're like you're falling in love with a person, like with all the other aspects that make them amazing, it if that's all that you have then there's nothing, it's not going to stick anywhere. There's no foundation. There's no more fiber to keep it together. So I think that's what the issue is when it comes to dating like that because, okay, we're getting it in for a year, two years, three years, and then all of a sudden... You get tired of it. You get tired of it. Oh, I want something different. But marriage is like, yo, listen, like this is this is how our bed is made, mm-hmm. and we're able to lay in it. Okay. You know? So I think I think when you look at the term dating... Right. If you take sex out of dating, like the American style dating, it's it's the same sort of dating same that we thing. would do. Yeah. And so I think it's very easy to do. Cause uh, when you think about it like that. I mean, I never thought about that. When you're exactly right, <clears throat> in American culture, when people assume dating, the first thing that comes to mind is I'm going out with this girl. I'm getting it in. You feel me? Yeah. This is yeah, my yeah, girl. Yeah. We're we getting it in. We are living together, and we're just cooling. We enjoying life. Yeah. There is no next steps. Well, and that's one thing I've never like the last couple of years. I'm like, why don't you just get married? Like, if you if you if you buy a house with a girl, and you're still your girlfriend for six seven years, y'all ain't getting married. So I, you know, there's this book um, I I was listening to on the James Altucher podcast, and these love dogs were like, if you're with the dude and y'all together for X amount of years, and like five years, and y'all don't get married, then y'all not getting married. Wow, that's just crazy. And so, to all my peoples out there, like, I asked some of my friends, like, yo, like, are you and your girl getting married? Well, well we're chilling, man. Cool, bro. She ain't ready. You know. What I, are you waiting for? You know what I mean? Like, what is... Well, yeah. I, I, you know, I told one of my friends, I think that people hold too high, hold marriage at too high of a um, pedestal. Okay. And then people don't hold it at high enough of a pedestal. Meaning that people think that it's something that... It's almost like how we were saying, like taking the Shahada, right? Oh, yeah. oh my God, you gotta be, I, I'm not ready. I'm not perfect yet for it. And I think that's how a lot of people view marriage. Like, yo, I can't do marriage because I'm not good. I'm not, I'm not, I, there's certain things I need to stop doing before I get married. I see, yeah. Every year. Right? I hear all the time. And then the other side of it is people don't hold it to high enough of esteem because they treat it so frivolously. Like, it doesn't matter, but it does matter. But it matters enough for you to actually get married. Okay, now that makes sense. I think the funniest thing that I hear with brothers, because I'm around like young Muslims all the time, and then you know they're whether they're dating or seeing other women and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, bro, even thinking about getting married, 
Nah, not really, but if I did, dog, she would have be a perfect joint on her dean, bro. Like, I'm telling you, bro, like, she'll be, I won't have to worry about nothing. You feel me? And I'm like, bro, so you're telling me you, somebody that don't practice, somebody that don't do anything that's obligatory, meet a girl that does kind of everything, Chances are, like, the chances are very slim that she's going to choose you because she's going to look at you like, uh, next. <laughs> you feel me? You're going to be like, next. So one thing that I would kind of challenge, not the youth, but challenge like the older individuals within the mosque or in the community, like give the youth, a, provide the youth with a sanctuary where we can meet each other. Yeah. You know, meet each other, get to know each other. Without making it seem so bad, like bro, yeah. I work okay, like I, I I work with girls all day. I'm around girls. I went to a school that was mainly girls. You feel me? Like I can control myself, bro. Yeah. You feel me? I think I think it's older people that can't control themselves. Older people are perverts, bro. Let's be honest. Yeah, older people are perverts. Yeah. I mean, look, all of us, all of us are at some level, but older people, man, they 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 just think pervertedly about everything. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh my God, they're talking. They must be. They must be having sex. <laughs> I saw this one tweet. This girl was like, Muslims, Muslims don't have sex. They just roll up angles and boom, <laughs> they're pregnant. I, I, uh, what was it? I think I was talking to like an older fella. I think uh, whether it's Saudi Arabia and some other Muslim countries. Once they get to a certain age, they just stop having sex with their wife. What? Yeah. The f- yeah, just be just legit, just laying down. But you know what's crazy? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, having sex with your wife. Is a form of worship. Yeah. About it. You know why? Because why? you're worshiping your family. You're doing things that are right. Because if you're not getting in with her, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? No, think about it. We have that urge. He put that urge into us. You can get that from somewhere else. Yeah. What? what? Or you what is he doing? You go hit the strip club. You go hit. You know, watch. Get off some porno. You know, like it's like, yo. What is he doing? He might have a second wife on the low that nobody knows about. <laughs> oh, for I am allowed to have to do more. Yes. yes. <laughs> do not. No, I mean, dog. That is that is crazy, man. Like. You guys are saying, like, son, last, to my last breath. Talking about your wife? Yes. Pumping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I'm just being, I'm just being honest. I mean. But we gotta come and jump on your smile, like, hey, 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 you got that glow. <laughs> <laughs> got that nude in you, baby. You know, it's funny you, you talk about how dudes are like, yeah, man, like, I, I'm, I need to grow my DNA. And you, we've talked about this yeah. plenty of times where it's like, you know, you said, dude, we have to make sure we're straight and that, that we're trying to, like, we can't ask for a 10, but we're adding on a level of two. Like, we have to at least be attempting to get there because if you, even if you get it, let's say you get the girl that you're yeah. asking for, you're not going to be able to keep it. You're not going to be able to, yeah. You're not going to be able to keep it. So I think that's, that's what people have to understand about marriage. Like, you have to, you can't expect one thing and not expect the same things to yourself. But I don't think they can even find it. So for example, right now, we're meeting so many great Muslim women that are really doing damage control within the deen, just kind of like really making things happen, you feel me? Mm-hmm. But when we weren't on it, we were we were hanging out with twos and threes because that's what we were looking at. God damn. You know what I'm saying? So call them out. <laughs> <laughs> Not looks wise, you feel me? <laughs> but like now that we're kind of shifting, Man. So now that we're kind of shifting and looking for women that are similar to us, that also, you mm-hmm. know, not only on their dean, but have faith, mm-hmm. you feel me, in the future, faith in themselves, and women that just, that kind of just rock, you feel me? I know, yeah, you, I, I know yeah. you, your mom's a baller, my mom's a baller, like, yeah, they really man. made things happen. They got, they got to be able to shake and move, yeah, man. Bro. And then I'm just like... Those old girls that I was messing with, they were, they were talking to. Bums. Just te- yeah, bums, temporary, bro. Yeah, you taking a thousand pictures, what the hell is that going to do for me? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, take some pictures. You, you, like, make sure you're selling, you know what I mean? Make sure, like, like you're out there, like, promoting a brand or doing something. Yeah, for so That's not like doing something else. But if you're doing something that has no elasma, which means, like, no, my fish fader, I mean, like benefit. Just, there's no benefit, exactly, my fish fader. What that no, My fish fader? My fish fader. Yeah, just there is no fader. benefit in it, you feel me? But now we're looking for women that are beneficial to us, mm-hmm. that will just coast on this world and take us on to the next, my brother. Hey, good in this world, I'm good in here, right? Yes, sir. No, bro, I, I 110% agree, man. I, I think that the age that we're in now, um, especially what we're getting ready to do with this event, is... 
is something that we're looking to spearhead. And it's something that we look to do when we first set out to do this podcast was to not just have a bunch of young Muslims listen to us, but to build a physical community of young Muslims yeah. that can talk and engage and, and relate both men and women. Because like me, we the first Muslim woman, and it, it's crazy that this is true, but the first Muslim woman that I was really, young Muslim woman okay. that I was able to like really engage with was here at BCU. Oh wow, was that, that was your first time? That was my first time like engaging with one that, and it, and it wasn't like a family friend yes. or somebody. You feel somebody me? that you were put on to. Yeah, or that, or that I knew from childhood. Like that was the Got first time like, I had talked outside of like your family. Okay, yeah. Because that's basically my family. Like I'm, I'm basically part of the family there. Like a Muslim woman that I saw in public, I went and talked to her and everything was Gucci. And it, nothing felt like, it didn't feel weird. It felt like, yo, I'm just talking to another young person that we just have something very tremendous in common, you know? So it was, it was really cool to be able to, to talk like that and to have that freedom and not feel like somebody's watching me saying, oh, what are they doing? Yes. You know? Because we, we're adults. We can't control ourselves. So I think what we're doing with this podcast, we're getting more. We want to get a group more into that light of feeling comfortable talking to people of the opposite sex and the same faith and not seeing that anything is wrong. This might be a good time to talk about that event. Yes, it is. Yes. So, June 30th, we'll be in D.C. at the Islamic Heritage Museum. Mm -hmm. And just like Jabril mentioned, it's going to be just a sanctuary where young, single Muslims can come together and just have a conversation. We can talk about history. We can talk about sports. We can talk about whatever. But the mm -hmm. goal is to get young Muslims together in a controlled environment that's safe, fun, and just free-flowing. It's on June 30th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Islamic Heritage Museum in D.C. We're going to be posting the event on our Instagram and Twitter, Young, the letter N, Muslim. So it's going to be all on that. Um, it's going to be a private event because we want to make sure that the environment is controlled, like I mentioned yeah. earlier. And yeah. We got. We want to make sure the right people in there because yeah. we don't want no weird people. Yeah, the no age, shady people. The age range is from eighteen to twenty six. Yep, eighteen to um, twenty six. We will car people if you look like you old enough to be some of our parents. <laughs> um, so you know we we're, we are making sure like the right people sure. get in. Um, but we we encourage you like if you are interested if you are in the DMV area, yep. uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia for any of our listeners from anywhere else. Uh, make sure you, you hit us up, DM us. Um, yep. You can check on our Facebook. We'll post the event on our Facebook page. Uh, and maybe even, if, if possible, then we'll try and link that onto the YouTube video as well if you if that's how you watch these videos. So, you know, like we, we want to act on what we originally dreamt of and that's to have a, a young, youthful, growing community. And I think that we're... On the way. Yeah. So lunch, light lunch will be served so, um, no, 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 no. Heavy hors d'oeuvres. Oh, heavy hors d'oeuvres. Finger foods. Whoa. So make sure you clean them hands and start plucking when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be $10 a head, but that's all proceeds will go towards the museum. So it's going to be donation-based, so don't yep. worry about that. The museum and then, and then the food that, that we're eating. Yes. So yep. um, nothing's profit-based. Pre-register. you got to pre-register. You can't pay at the door because we, we're keeping a head count of who comes there. So yeah. um, we're... Everything's going to be done through PayPal. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a PayPal account, you should set one up just in general because you're going to need it. It's going to come in handy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, if you guys are interested in doing that, make sure you guys just hit us up. Um, my name is Jabril. And this is Muhammad. And you can find us. Like, what, Give them your uh, personal. Yeah, your so personal. My personal Instagram and Twitter is mo, M-O-E underscore flip it. So that's mo, flip it. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you check out the podcast, man. Subscribe. Let us know what you think in our YouTube channel. So the podcast, you can find us on SoundCloud, Google Play, and iTunes, The Young and Muslim Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, The yeah. Young and Muslim Podcast. Episodes are dropping every, every week, Monday and Wednesday at 7 a.m. sharp is the audio version, and then 7 p.m. is the visual version. Yep, so YouTube. Please, then, just let us know. Yeah, and then you can find me personally at... The real underscore Brill, B R E E L. Mm -hmm. um, that's on Twitter and Instagram. Very active on Twitter. I think that's the best way to, to kind of get a hold of me as well. 
Um, and we're giving that out because we want people to be able to reach out to us to talk about this event and, and come to the event. Yeah. So if you're in the area or if you're willing to make a drive from wherever you are, because maybe you're like me, you don't have that in your area, yeah. come through. Like we, we look forward to meeting new people and talking to people. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great time. Yep. June 30th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Islamic Heritage Museum. So we can't marry or not? Or not. Uh-huh. All right. So wrap this up. I'm Jabril. Mr. Muhammad. And we greet you with the greens of peace. Assalamu alaikum.